Good morning guys, today I actually am working on about three different creatures. I have yet to start them other than getting stuff prepped, so we have quite a bit to work on today. The first thing that I'm going to be working on is getting some sewing done for two of them. I'm not sure if the third one is ready to be sewn yet because it's kind of an experimental piece and I'm not sure um, if I should sew the pieces yet before I make the wireframe and everything or sew them later and put them together at the same time. So I'm going to start on the sewing for two first and try and figure out what I'm doing with that one. And then I'm also going to try and get as much clay work done today as I can because again I've got three creatures I'm working on. One of the creatures is going to be for that wireframe that we did in last week's tutorial. Um, if you didn't catch it I made a just a quick tutorial on how to make wireframes. I'll leave a link down below if you wanted to see it. I'm going to be trying to get this piece done as quickly as I can because I want to use it for another tutorial on how to fur faces. So we're going to be doing a bunch of sewing, clay work and stuff for that and um, that will be another tutorial that hopefully I can have up soon. Anyways, I'm going to get all my fabric pieces. I got everything cut out and we're going to start sewing those too. Okay, so I've already got a decent amount of sewing already done on the wolf, the body, the tail, the front legs. I'm just working on the back legs right now. And then I have a lot to do on this piece. This is going to be a S Beyond commission that I'm taking on. I've said this before, I'm technically not open for commissions, but if you guys are interested in one, feel free to message me. I'm trying to not take on more than like one a month just because I have a lot to work on and the last thing I want to do is get behind on anything and um, commissions are definitely a lot of uh, work. So I had some extra time so I accepted this one and I'm going to get the sewing done for it today. So a funny thing um, about last Friday's video, my little wireframe tutorial, it almost didn't happen because um, I almost had a house fire. That was terrifying. I was in the middle of filming it and suddenly um, smoke alarms went off and no sooner than like a few seconds after those are going off, the whole apartment is just filled with smoke. I was freaking out. I thought the whole building was on fire, but nope, it was just me. Yeah, I can't believe how fast the place filled up in smoke and basically what happened was the circuit board and my air conditioner failed. So that's not good. So basically what happened is the air conditioner kicked on, the circuit board broke or whatever it did, and it started burning. And um, so you guys know that's basically melted plastic. So it's not just like smoke from like wood burning. It's like the smell of plastic burning. It took a day and a half to get the smell of plastic out. And even though I was only in the smoke for couple of minutes at most because I had to figure out what to do with Axel. Um, I had to go and get him situated so I didn't have to leave him in the smoke um, because I had to go run up front and get uh, maintenance so they could help me figure out where it was coming from. Because it wasn't a fire technically but there was smoke everywhere and no one else was having their alarms go off so it was like I need to figure out what the... I need to figure out what this is. <laughs> So I freaked out, got him situated on the balcony so he was uh, not in the smoke, ran uh, over to get help. Luckily maintenance at my apartment is amazing, they just, they both, like, I think there's like three or four of them, but two of them were just like booking it up the stairs to come help me. <laughs> but yeah, the past a uh, couple days after that I was not feeling good at all. I actually got sick the night after, or the night of. Uh, because of the smoke. Because if you didn't know if you breathe in smoke from burning plastic, it's actually very poisonous. Luckily, I wasn't bad enough to need to go in or anything, but it definitely was scary. I, w I was coughing up a lung for quite a while. But yeah, that happened. I almost didn't have Friday's little wireframe tutorial up by then because I was recording and my throat was so sore after it I couldn't just hop back in and I was feeling horrible so I took the rest of the day off after that um, and just worked on editing. Oh, real quick, I wanted to show you guys my progress on my mermaid. The whole canvas is finally covered at least with one layer. There's a lot of work still done but I'm so happy with her. What do you guys think about the colors I picked? Because I was trying to have the fish kind of more of a uh, Hawaiian style for fish species, so hopefully I have them all correct, but I saw a parrot fish and I was like, oh I love the colors of that, so I decided to kind of go 
with those colors for her body and then I decided her hair should be really dark because I wanted it to stand out and just kind of bring some attention to her face. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. Only thing is I have to keep moving it all over the place to not bump it while I'm working on other things so that like hair and stuff doesn't get stuck to it. So yeah, most of the canvas is wet right now <laughs> and it's large and in my workspace is the only spot that's kind of safe to put it right now, so. I love these little fish. They came out so cute. I'm really happy with them. I think I need to adjust their eyes a little bit, but I'm so happy with them. Just cute. <laughs> I've got littler ones right down here that I need to finish, but I just haven't decided on the patterns yet because I had references and I can't remember where they're at on what they were based off of, so I think I need to find new references and figure out what species I want them to be. Because again, I want them to all be kind of in the same area so it makes sense. I mean, it is a fantasy piece so it doesn't have to make sense like that, but I kind of wanted to and since they're going to be redfish, I'm kind of limited on what species I want to do unless I change the colors. So yeah, I'm currently trying to not bump this the whole time while I'm working on other stuff. I'm also leaving these two canvases out because I'm trying to get myself to sketch out more paintings. <laughs> I have ideas already designated for these two, I just haven't put the time into sketching it out so I could start them. Um, I'm currently working on too many paintings though, so I probably shouldn't sketch them out, but I really want to. Let's see if we can see them. He's so tired. It's really early. So Espeon's tail is really weird to sew because of the whole like forked thing. So I'm trying to remember how I did this because I did an Espeon before a long time ago. But I think what I'm going to end up doing is probably sandwiching them together and sewing the two sides like that and then flipping it and then sewing the inside portion of the fork. Because then it'll probably be easier to stuff it. Ugh. Oh no. Or would it be easier to just go all the way around? I think this would be hard to flip out though. You know, let's just do the sides and we'll figure it out. <laughs> but yeah guys, I need to come up with another painting that I don't want to do a time lapse on. Because that's currently my problem. Is the mermaid is the only one that I'm currently not trying to record for a time lapse. And it's wet right now to the point where I can't work on it. So I'm kind of like at a standstill unless I want to paint something for a time lapse. I need to figure out something that I want to paint that I don't want to do a time lapse of. Because like I said, those two canvases are designated for paintings, but they're both really interesting ideas, at least I think so. And I want to do recordings of them. So that kind of uh, doesn't help me in my situation. I'm also kind of low on canvases right now. I think I just have a bunch of like 8x10s. So if I can think of something small I want to paint, I need to make an art store run and just pick up a bunch of them. That way I have them at least. But if I go, I know I'm going to talk myself into getting a really large one <laughs> that I shouldn't because I need to at least finish The Mermaid before I buy a really large canvas. Because the mermaid is a 36 by 48, I think. And I would love to get something not so long, just kind of like, kind of roughly the same size, but wider. So I guess bigger. <laughs> okay, so I got the sewing done for the wolf and the espion, or at least as far as I can without putting them together because we're not ready for that. And then I also picked out some gems and eyes for the clay pieces. I figured the red would kind of look good with the um, black fur and then I also had a red gem so I figured I could see if that'll work on this. I may not use it but I kind of want to. And then this is going to be for that weird dragon piece that I want to do. These kind of match, so I figured I could use the little leftover claws. These are leftover from when we did the ghost dragon and I've just been kind of keeping them because I figured they could make cute little horns and they match the eyes that I want to use, so win-win. So I'm going to get my clay out and we're going to start working on at least the head for the wolf and the head for the espion. So I just realized why 
I was kind of thinking this wouldn't work for the wolf. And I realized it's because I only have one of these right now. And I need to use this for Espeon because of the gem on the forehead. I was wondering, why am I keep thinking this isn't going to work? Why I can't use this? What is it supposed to be for? And I finally realized, yeah, I need it for Espeon. <laughs> so we're going to do Espeon first. The eyes are going to be made out of clay because of the way they're shaped. It's just going to be easier unless I get really large domes. It's not going to work. So. I don't have that, so we're just gonna make them out of clay, and then of course we've got the gem. So I got this glued to the glass container, and I'm just gonna start getting it all covered. Right now, I'm just trying to get the basic shape marked out, so when I add the eyelids, I can lay them out correctly. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but I roughly sketched out the shape that I need to add the eyelids in. This one's a little off. I probably need to lower that. Yeah, I'm just kind of marking out the basic shape, and then I'm going to follow those. So I need to make some strips of clay to go along those lines. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Nice and angular. Okay, now I need to figure out where to put the gem. I'm kind of guessing it should be there, but I'm going to check photos to make sure, because I'm not 100% sure. There. It looks like it's a lot lower, like more like around here. Okay. And then I also need to make holes for where we're going to connect the ears and then the little fur tufts. See, my gem's kind of large, so I can't put it too, too low. So I'm guessing right here would probably work. That looks good. Okay, I'm just going to clean up the edges and then place some holes and then we're going to move on to the wolf. You know, I love making videos, but every now and again it's just so nice to not have to record the making of a whole creature sometimes. Um, I'm really excited that I can just relax a little bit with this piece and just record little bits of it. I need to do that more, just pick like a creature to make mini projects with. Because I know a lot of you guys probably want a little bit more in-depth projects, and that would be a fun idea. Oh, those guys are cute. I know doing the spots like opposite each other makes it look a little bug-eyed, but it bugs me to have them like, I don't know. It just bugs me to not do it. I really like symmetry. Okay, so I got all my clay pieces done. Um, I still need to paint them, but I'm not sure if we'll get that done today. So I've got the wolf head. I got that right here. And they're all baked already, so you'll notice that the eyes, for some reason when I make red eyes, after they're baked, they kind of darken a little bit, but I really like that actually. So they don't look so um, neon-y. And then I made a few paw pads for him, because I decided that I wanted him to have paw pads actually. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do that or not, but I ended up just making them anyways because if I change my mind and don't use them, I can use them for something else. And then I have this little guy right here. He is kind of like a bug dragon. I'm not 100% sure what bug I want to go for. I'm kind of aiming for like dragonfly-ish butterfly style, but I haven't quite decided, but I did make the head for that. The eyes for some reason came loose, so I do have to glue them. <laughs> But they're kind of holding their place, they're just like extremely loose and they'll pop right off. So I need to glue those first before I paint him. And then we have um, Espeon. I love the face for this, the eyes and the angles of them. It looks really cute. Wow, did I really forget to do that? <laughs> okay, we're not done with Espeon. What do you think I forgot to do with him? Got his own mouth and okay, so that's not too hard of a fix. I can honestly just sculpt it right in place on top. It's not like I need a super amount of detail or anything to it. And I was gonna make it kind of flat anyways. I guess I just got so busy with the eyes I completely forgot about the rest of the face. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess he's not done, so I need to do that. But I did make him some feet. I made him some really tiny little feet. Because his legs are kind of like really pointed and stilt-like, like when he's drawn as a cartoon. So I figured let's make his paws really tiny so they do that shape. So yeah, I'm going to see if these work. Again, just like the paw pads for the wolf, if I don't use them, I can use them for something else. 
Anyways, I'm going to fix Espeon's face, <laughs> get that done and baked, and then I can get all my painting done for the day. Again, I don't think I'll get it all done, but I want to try. And I wanted to show you guys the sketch for one of the paintings that I'm going to be doing. I can find it. I just designed this one. Okay, hopefully this shows up on camera. But this is for the larger canvas that I have, and it's kind of like a hourglass with a person trying to stop time with a cork, and they're getting buried in sand basically, and then have a snake wrapped around it that has bitten off its tail. I kind of wanted to do something a little bit darker with this piece because most of my stuff has been really lighthearted and I wanted to do a lot of symbolism with it. So it's kind of like um, mankind's ever-ending desire to escape death, which is something you can't escape. And the reason I have the snake with its tail bit off is um, snakes biting their tails are considered like an infinity loop kind of thing. And it's supposed to represent like endlessness well, it's, it broke, so <laughs> it ended. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to try and sketch that out on the larger canvas that I have uh, that I showed you that was blank right now. So that is what I'm going to try and do tonight just to relax. Anyways, we've been going on for quite a while, so I'm going to call today's vlog done and get the rest of my work done for the day. That way I have time to actually edit this and get this up on Friday. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.